to Birmingham. We are glad you're all here, and you are in the production studio. So, hi. hi. We are here to learn about how Gutenberg can be used as a developer <coughs> foundation, not just for blocks. So, I hope you're in the right place to hear Kyle Johnson, who is right here and will be speaking to us. Kyle is the senior software developer for GiveWP, is a contributing uh, contributor to the WordPress core, and uh, he speaks at several word camps and at various other open source conferences. So he's also a collector of hobbies, a musician, makes furniture, picks locks, reads, oh, sorry, it's avid a hobby. reader, avid reader, reader. Okay, cool. And he wants to be an author. Does that mean you are an author? Or you just one day aspire to be an author? I uh, want to be book author specifically. Want to be book author. Oh. I write stuff online, but that just feels not permanent. So. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Great. Well, thank you, Kyle. We're looking forward to hearing from you. Too. Oh, okay. All right. <clears throat> Hello. Uh, my name is Kyle Johnson. I did not expect as many as you to be in here as there is today. Um, so thank you for being here. I know it's early. Um, hopefully this goes well. Um, yeah, so when we're talking about <clears throat> Gutenberg um, as a uh, development foundation, um, more than just a, a content editor for WordPress. Um, I was told I can only put logos and stuff on the, on the opening slide, so I went a little NASCAR with it. Um, I work for Give, which is under the umbrella of Stellar WP, which is a brand owned by Liquid Web. Um, it's a little complicated, so I have to put it there so I remember the structure. Um, Give still operates as an independent small team, thankfully, but um, I also contribute to WordPress core, plugins in the directory, speak at WordCamps, WPCI contributor. Um, if you're probably familiar with my work in some way, Ninja Forms, NWP, Caldera Forms, uh, US Affiliate WP, Lyft LMS, and Gutenberg are some of my bigger contributions. Um, so, yeah, if you recognize any of those things, that's part, partly my work. So, I'm not just a random person up here. Well, it feels like it at times. <clears throat> so yeah, Gutenberg um, as a development foundation. <clears throat> so we're familiar with um, the, the WordPress block editor as developers in WordPress. I'm sure you've used it. Um, if not, the general idea is that content is broken up into this concept called blocks, um, similar to Lego, so they can be stacked, rearranged, and moved around. Uh, previously, um, in WordPress, you would have just a a text area, just a single block of code, uh, or content, if you will, and then copy and paste, move things around. Um, it's just one piece of content. This allows us to um, fragment our content into small pieces that can be rearranged or reused in different ways. Uh, for example, WordPress uses it to output on the front end using a theme. You can also do headless WordPress to pull it in and then with that block content, rearrange it if you need to. Um, if you want to do like a stepped content, inject ads or other uh, dynamic content. Um, it allows you to play with it as data and not just a single, single data point. So the block editor in WordPress is Gutenberg, but Gutenberg is not the block editor. Um, square is a rectangle, but a rectangle is not a square kind of thing. Gutenberg itself is actually a, a package built um, under the WordPress umbrella uh, with a lot of automatic developers. And the idea is that it can be used for in other places other than just WordPress. <clears throat> Previously, WordPress code was written for WordPress, written in a very specific way, the WordPress way, if you're familiar with that, uh, that phrasing. <clears throat> Their intention here was to do something different, build it outside of WordPress and bring it in to WordPress. And there's still some crossover there, um, but on the, on the whole, it's, it's made separately. So the, the block editor is becoming the new interface for WordPress content management. <clears throat> and as I said, it can be used in, in different places as a standalone JavaScript application. For example, this is the Drupal Gutenberg editor. So it's, it's moving beyond WordPress rather quickly. Um, it looks like the WordPress editor, the logo's different, the sidebar's styled a little bit differently. Um, and it works a little differently in, in terms of some of the features they have, like Drupal has this revision log message thing that's native to Drupal, 
If you're not familiar, Drupal is another popular CMS written in PHP, <clears throat> open source, very different like niche compared to WordPress. Um, so, but they're using it also to bring it in in order to um, elevate their content in a way that can be more um, dynamically manipulated. So like I said, it looks a lot like the one we have in WordPress. Um, this is a package for Laravel called Laraberg, uh, which is Gutenberg for Laravel. Uh, this allows you to create your own custom application using the Laravel framework and then drop in a Gutenberg editor, um, kind of like the, the Gutenberg Anywhere that WordPress is doing. If you go on the wordpress.org uh, website and leave a comment, you'll notice it's no longer just a text area. They're slowly moving it to this Gutenberg Anywhere isolated block editor, editor system. Uh, we're also seeing it in October CMS, which is a CMS written using Laravel, and they're implementing the Laraberg package into their content management system in order to introduce blocks into that system also. So standalone, standalone JavaScript application um, has an interface for data. It doesn't matter what platform it's on. <clears throat> and over the past nine months, I've been reusing Gutenberg to build the new donation form builder for GiveWP. Um, it is a <clears throat> standalone block editor. Um, it does run in WordPress, but it doesn't have to. And it's using the components of Gutenberg, uh, like the block list in here. It's got the, the inspector and the text controls and select controls and a lot of the button components. The shared components are working together here. <clears throat> but as much as this looks like the WordPress block editor, but with green instead of black on white or white on black, this is actually built in with components from the ground up. <clears throat> so um, a, a very generalized example of how WordPress implements the block editor is uh, represented here. <clears throat> you see the individual components. Um, inside of all that, there's a block list component, which is very core to Gutenberg as a concept. This is the repeater for e all the different blocks wrapped inside this block list component that you can use outside, but this is generally the context within which it's used. used. Um, observe typing is a higher order component around that. Writing flow is the same thing. And then block tools is a higher order component above the blocks that allows it to interact with the blocks using those that bar of all the buttons and controls and things. <clears throat> for, for my purposes, for our purposes here, two of the important ones are block tools and block list. If you're creating a block editor for something other than just written content, uh, things like observe typing and writing flow aren't necessarily as important. The benefits of observe typing and writing flow is you can do things like select text across multiple blocks, um, or it will automatically, like on the keystroke of enter, create a new paragraph block for you. So those are all content specific. And if you're using Gutenberg not as a content editor, then those aren't um, necessary for your implementation. So the, a block editor can be boiled down even farther to a much simpler implementation where the block list is kind of the core of that, of that application. <clears throat> One of the big uh, controversies around Gutenberg um, has been the way it stores data in HTML content uh, comments. Um, a lot of questions were raised, well, if we're separating um, the data dynamically from the, the content, why would we still store it in HTML and use HTML content uh, comments in this wacky way to encode the data into the content, <clears throat> as opposed to just storing JSON or another format of data serialized using PHP? Uh, there are a couple reasons why they did that. <clears throat> One, it allows for backwards compatibility. Uh, by storing the block data in HTML comments, the block editor can work with existing content that was created using the classic editor and vice versa. And so because it's just HTML, you can render it on a page. You can open it up in the block editor and it parses the blocks. Open it up in the classic editor and it's still just HTML. Um, it, it's a backwards compatible format that's very important to WordPress as an ecosystem and not want to introduce an overly breaking change was well, absolutely necessary. Um, Next, it fails gracefully if a block no longer exists. So in con contrast to short codes, whenever a plugin introduces a short code for use and you add that short code to the page and then disable that plugin, 
that short code renders as raw text on the page in the square brackets. <clears throat> you lose the dynamic rendering or the content replacement of that plugin's functionality. But with blocks, either the existing HTML that was rendered by that block plugin remains, or if it's a dynamic one, it's an HTML comment which then just doesn't render. So the benefit of the HTML comment is you can render it but not get the artifact of that plugin no longer dynamically replacing that content. <clears throat> it also makes it easy to parse the blocks. Um, HTML provides a clear, the comments provide a clear delimiter for where one block begins, another ends, which makes it easy to parse the content and identify individual blocks. Uh, you have the opening and closing ones. It works as like a header for each block. Uh, so you have, you know, what kind of block it is, and you know um, what kind of, what data it has. Um, it also stores data, some in the HTML, some in the HTML comments. There's some cool stuff with the way it works there if you want to get into it. And then, um, yeah, it allows easy access to block data, um, as I was saying. Uh, the data can be then parsed out of that. Um, it also doesn't rely on having JavaScript or any more complex uh, methods for reading that data. <clears throat> the HTML as a string value can be parsed in a stream, and so you can pull data as you go through it, as opposed to having a JavaScript object that can be um, <clears throat> hydrated into memory, which can be a very large object with, very, with a lot of nested properties, um, multiple levels deep, and that all takes up memory in your application. Um, every single chunk of code or block or interblock would have to be converted to in-memory objects to then go through them. And there, there are advanced ways to handle that with streaming the JSON as well, but one of the really big benefits of the HTML and HTML comments is they can be more easily streamed um, uh, in terms of parsed in, in a stream or using like regex or something. <clears throat> which means at this point, it's easy to extract the data using regular expressions, which is more efficient than using a DOM parser, which again converts that into objects in memory and all that. Um, one caveat here um, is with the regular expressions, there it's easily extracted when using regular expressions. You have something like this, you have the type, you have the attributes, and there's inner content. Um, so unfortunately, that's not the actual regex that WordPress uses. It actually looks a little bit more like this. And in the actual WordPress code, the opening comment is, I the magic. Um, <laughs> it goes on to explain how all that works. Um, and even here, that's not the full regex. It actually goes on to um, farther down the line um, and so it's the kind of thing like don't look into this function um, as you've seen before with like database changes and stuff. Um, and so it, it is rather complex, but unfortunately these, or fortunately these days we do have tools to help us better understand regex such as ChatGPT that can actually walk you through how this regex works and what it does. Um, and I'm actually kind of surprised at how terse this response is for the, how wild that regex is. So. The HTML comment, uh, comments structure does allow for easy parsing with regex. Once the regex is written, you now have this like stream parser for that. <clears throat> so here's an example of that um, HTML structure with the comments um, in a very simple like hello world, welcome to WordPress post. You see there's like the, the namespace and then the block type. So this is a core block. WP is the namespace for WordPress core. And then paragraph is the type of block. You'll see is an opening and a closing tag. The closing tag identified by the backslash. Um, regex is able to determine the difference in those to see a closing tag as well. Then the, the content in between. Um, and so if this were a dynamic block instead of like a paragraph that has rendered HTML, um, it would be just the comments. And then they would just be not rendered um, if the plugin's not active, which is a, a nice benefit here. But also this paragraph tag is a paragraph tag. And if you delete that paragraph block, the paragraph tag still exists in the content, uh, which is highly beneficial as opposed to a short code that injects something, but only injects it if the plugin's active. So a lot of benefits um, in, in, this, in this system. <clears throat> However, um, the HTML comments are not the only way to do data in Gutenberg, but rather actually they're a concept of WordPress. So the Gutenberg editor doesn't necessarily use the HTML content comments. Um, it actually has, uh, you pass in the value to this block editor provider for state, and it's 
an object of uh, blocks in data. And then on change, you can call this dispatch form blocks to export the data. And that actually happens as um, objects in JavaScript, in memory, in the client browser, and all that. So WordPress is actually taking that, those JavaScript objects and parsing it into HTML comments to then store. Then when it loads the editor, it brings the HTML out of the database and parses it back into JavaScript objects for use by the JavaScript application. So actually, the HTML comments are not a Gutenberg concept. They are a WordPress concept, which means if we want to reuse the block editor, HTML comments are not something we're tied to, and we're more free to work in the JavaScript object JSON notation uh, that we were otherwise used to and as a common standard across API systems. <clears throat> this is an example structure um, of how a, how a block is repre represented um, in uh, JavaScript or JSON notation. Uh, again, you have that name. Uh, there are attributes and then inner blocks. If you remember back to the regex, it was looking for name, attributes, and inner content, which are more blocks rendered uh, recursively. Um, so th this is that representation of that. It's a standard structure that then gets repeated inside of inner blocks, and it can just keep going down blocks all the way down as far as you would like. And so this is how we're using it in Give. Uh, this is actually how it comes out of Gutenberg as this JSON format. And so we just we stuck with that natively for our own use cases because it better fit our application. <clears throat> and one way we're doing that is we created this PHP layer um, that is able to actually take the, the blocks from the JSON and parse it into this block collection for manip manipulation within P a PHP syntax. And then we use that to validate and all that and then save the, the form data. Uh, GiveWP has um, a fields API. I know WordPress has been working on a fields API for, I think, 10 years now. It hasn't materialized in WordPress core. Um, but GiveWP has one that we use for our needs. Um, and this works out really well, converting that JSON block into this collection of blocks and then into our fields API, which allows for a more fluent syntax. Like you can say field. Um, you can have a field object and then method arrow name method and then pass it a name. Or uh, method arrow description, pass a description. It's a fluent, um, um, almost language type syntax for doing that. And we're building that around that blocks interface, which means we can use it on the front end however we want. And so the back end has JSON data and the front end using this fields API to then render a different JavaScript application. So the output of Gutenberg as JavaScript is actually highly beneficial, beneficial and flexible for developers' use to build any other kind of block editor you would like. And that's um, benefits further made evident by its use across Drupal and Laravel and October CMS and GiveWP um, and Contact Form 7 blocks has a new plugin that, that does that and just it, how it's converting from blocks to short codes is, is really flexible there. Um, so I have uh, plenty of time for questions, but that's the basics of Gutenberg as a foundation. Uh, there's a lot more detail to dig into in terms of the block list components um, and all the other different components and control compo components that work as like a style guide and all that um, that are specific to an application itself. So I don't want to go too deep into that. Uh, but if you do have any questions pertaining to an application or a piece of that, I'd be happy to attempt to answer uh, best that I can. Uh, here in front of a room of people, um, or I can talk to anyone afterwards if you like. I will be around for the duration of the camp as well. So, uh, thank you. Water, thank you. Thank you, Kyle, so much. Here, what we're going to do, I'm, oh good, it's remote. We're going to try to pass the mic around so the transcription could continue. Mm. So, uh, please speak clearly into the mic and wait until we get to the mic. We're going to give Kyle a moment to try his throat. Thank you. And rest a little bit. But Matthew, I think you have a question first. I'm walking slowly over to you so the moisture can flow. <clears throat> Any non hecklers with a question? <laughs> Anyone not from Cleveland, Tennessee have a question? <laughs> well, now I have to have <clears throat> Yeah. So if you're using Gutenberg as a foundation, but you're not using it as the block editor, uh, and you're storing as JSON, are you storing that in the posts table? How, how are you actually storing the data? Do you have a recommendation there for what that would look like? Um, are you storing it directly in a long text 
kind of column, or what, what does that look like for what you've shown us here? Yeah. <clears throat> Originally, uh, we stored it as the post content. We just stored it as JSON instead of HTML. Um, it was never intended to be rendered directly from that post content, so we didn't feel the need to put it in a renderable format. Uh, but we did use the post content column of that table. <clears throat> Due to other business and product reasons, um, we wanted to reuse that post content for something else so that each form has its own page, because um, it's a custom post type called give forms. And so we want to actually use that post type or post content to render the form itself, which is a page that has a form block on it. So we ended up switching tactics and just moved it to um, um, a meta field, a custom meta field. Um, and that gives you all the space that you need. It's a flexible format. It's just a, a blob of JSON that then gets parsed as a string into JavaScript objects. So it's, it's fairly flexible there. There are probably some more advanced ways where you could split it out if you wanted to. Um, but such use case would kind of depend on if you're needing to query the database based on that data. Um, but we're not querying it based on the contents of that JSON. We're just using it as a storage, a blob of storage to then bring in and parse. Any other questions? Hey, uh, it's Rich from uh, Automatic. So uh, a lot of people are moving towards using dynamic blocks, mm -hmm. building dynamic blocks. Do you see that uh, becoming an issue if you turn off the plug and you lose the block just like in short curves? <clears throat> you, you would lose the block's content, um, possibly. Uh, there, there are two ways to do that. You can have fallback content, I believe. Um, you can render content, but then update it later on, and it'll handle that. Um, <clears throat> you will lose the dynamic portion of the plugin if it's disabled, but you won't have an artifact remaining in the content unless you specifically choose to have a placeholder or a fallback. So um, as, a, as a problem, it depends on um, the perspective of the problem. Uh, for the content manager, if something goes wrong, that, that could be a problem. But to the end user reading and consuming the content or whatever system is consuming that, um, it's just like it's never there without any artifacts, um, which I think is a, a smart fallback kind of a thing, um, certainly depending on the use case whether how important that was. But if it's important, you can just keep it enabled. So I think it's kind of a non-issue there. Uh, so you would lose the content, but that's also kind of a feature here. So there's no artifacts remaining after the fact. Thank you. Anybody else with a question? OK. Oh, please, please. <laughs> okay, uh, this is the second one. So you know, from your experience building the give donation mm -hmm. form in the editor, did you run into any limitations? And is there anything that Core can do to help alleviate some of those? So we've been trying to contribute back to Gutenberg as we've gone through. Uh, there have been is at least one issue that comes to mind uh, to where you could have um, it was like a block limited to a single instance, but you could still dr drag and drop it into. Um, the block list, which in the, the WordPress block editor, that block's not listed in that tree to then drag and drop, so not an issue. We came across a small issue to where we were rendering it anyway, um, but grayed out. But even though it was disabled, you could still drag and drop it. Um, and so that was something we addressed. Um, otherwise, in terms of limitations, the biggest one is documentation. Um, you go to the documentation, it's like, oh, here's the property or co component I need to learn about, and it says documentation not available. That's, it's like, oh, it's right there, but it says there's nothing here. Um, <clears throat> so that's the biggest limitation. And then jumping in, you can still uh, click through in like an ID, IDE uh, to find the implementation of it in order to extract the, how it's supposed to be used. So I spent a lot of my time um, in, in the, the early months of this um, troubleshooting and learning the internals of Gutenberg. Um, so we could then develop an application using those components that weren't otherwise documented. So using the code as documentation worked. It just requires a much deeper dive and a much more intimate understanding of the code base. So increase in uh, filling in the documentation would help there a lot. There's also the isolated block editor package that Automatic has, and that's supposed to fill in a lot of those gaps in terms of configuring the thing. But even there, the documentation is lacking. Um, as much as I've, time I've spent on this, I, I tried to use the isolate block editor last night, 
and it was just like one compile error after another. Um, I think it has like SAS as a dependency, but that's not listed anywhere, um, and also not included in the dependency tree. So um, documentation is kind of the big thing, but as fast as Gutenberg moved, it's kind of hard to expect it to be developed in, in real time because it changes so frequently. But as it moves towards a more stable uh, position as being used in other real applications outside of WordPress, the documentation is going to become crucial. But also it's a point where it's going to start to solidify. And so it might be now time to start putting more resources in the documentation itself. Yeah. So um, one of the things I was thinking about is uh, if you have like a headless WordPress, mm -hmm. WordPress installation um, and you have your custom Gutenberg uh, editor, mm -hmm. Would that would you see any problems on the front end, like building out, I don't know, let's say build out the front end React or something? Do <coughs> you think that would hinder or help uh, if you had your own Gutenberg thing, or if you were still using WordPress Gutenberg with the comments and stuff? Uh, what, are, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, um, I'm currently using a headless WordPress installation for a, a blog, um, and just using the block editor to build out the content. Um, and there is some concern with the dynamic blocks and are they going to work in a headless situation because you don't have access to the plugin itself to render the content dynamically unless you try to intentionally fetch it through an API endpoint, which is an option. I was trying to read it from the database directly, and so I was able to find things like a code formatting block um, that is, um, has headless support, so it actually fully renders that, HT, that, that code block inside the content so that it's static and not dynamic. So there is some consideration there. Um, if you were consuming it in another application, um, you could, if, it's, if you're building your own application or block editor for your application, uh, you could certainly implement the dynamic parts into different sides of the application. Um, or just consider, since it's your own thing, having it generate content. Because you're not, in that case, worrying about the, the large scale and scope of WordPress and how it's used. So. Answer your question at all? Yeah, yeah. Okay. If not, we can talk more later. Yeah. yeah. So early, early on in the Gutenberg life cycle that there were memory leak and just memory cycle life cycle issues. Uh, that has improved considerably, uh, from what I can tell, uh, inside of WordPress, WordPress's version of Gutenberg. Outside of WordPress, are any of those issues still kind of coming up? Uh, were they fixed in the WordPress side or were they fixed in the Gutenberg side? Um, just from a memory usage and kind of bogging down at longer content links and that kind of thing. <clears throat> yeah, I know there's been a lot of work done to make it more performant, more optimized. Um, the interactions have gotten a lot faster, as you, you've mentioned and noticed. We have not come across any of those issues in GIVE, um, in, perhaps in large part because we're not doing really long content. Um, we are using it as a form builder, so you can add any number of fields that you want. Um, in my testing, I'm not using a ridiculous amount. I know in the, in the world of WordPress and products and products in general, customers will use things in ways you don't expect, so that very, very well might come back and get us, in which case we can reconsider some things, reach out to the Gutenberg team and work with them, because I'm sure they're dealing with that also, um, if it's a problem with this implementation as well. Um, for our use case, donation forms have a lot more opinion to them than do general forms like at Ninja Forms would, would create or something. So not been an issue for us. I don't foresee it being an issue, but it, it certainly could, and I'd be caught under, unawares. Um, but as fast as the Gutenberg project has moved in the past, um, any problems that arise, I'm confident would be resolved rather quickly. Um, <clears throat> for, for example, I have an open track ticket um, for WordPress core. It's been open five years now, um, almost twice as long as I've been at Give. Um, and it's still open. I, I, I submitted a patch and had a testing instructions and all that. And so it was just, it's just it's still sitting there, right? Um, <clears throat> so we've came across this issue in Gutenberg. Um, I patched it for our own use. Um, our development manager was like, you should submit that as a PR to Gutenberg. I'm like, yeah, that's a good idea. Um, I just did it in this way in ours so we can move forward and not worry about it. Don't know how long it's going to take. And he's like, you just go ahead and submit the PR. I said, OK, yeah. So took the time, wrote out the PR, hit submit. And I went to um, um, tell my development manager I had submitted the PR. And when I went back to link it to him, it had already been merged and approved and reviewed. Um, so that's 
very good to see. Um, the responsiveness of the team has been great. Um, but also, it just doesn't have the baggage of WordPress core, so it's able to move fast now. Um, certainly in the future, we'll see diminishing returns in that. Um, as WordPress, depending on the philosophies they keep and backwards compatibility, and maybe that's different in the JavaScript space, because browsers um, and support for JavaScript versions move at the pace of the browser and the client, um, not on the, as, in the same as the server. So the whole back with PHP is an upgrade in version of the server requires the person using the software to contact their host and update the PHP version if they'll even allow them to do that. Whereas JavaScript depends on the browser and browsers move at their own paces. Um, and so it's probably more likely that doesn't have the same baggage. But there'll be some certainly over time. But they, they've been very responsive, very helpful. And we have not run into any issues over the past nine months of throwing new weird things at it. Anybody else with a question? OK, coming on back to you. Uh, of Give specifically, yeah. I, I do speak hi highly of Gutenberg out of my experience of using it. Um, absolutely no connection to Matt Monwig or Automatic or the, the Gutenberg team whatsoever. Thank you. <clears throat> also, I don't get any compensation or paid for doing the talk um, or sharing about Gutenberg. Um, yeah, open source contribution is part of the community aspect. Thank you. Welcome. You mentioned uh, your team developed um, field API. Mm -hmm. Is that open source? Is it available anywhere? It is. <clears throat> uh, we've recently packaged it up um, into a standalone uh, package on GitHub. Um, it's under the namespace of Stellar WP. Um, Stellar WP being the WordPress umbrella under Liquid Web. Um, we did it in such a way that we could share it across the different plugins. And so we should see more adoption from other plugins in using this. Um, which, interestingly, might have weight enough to get larger growth. Um, the Fields API being developed for Core as a feature plugin doesn't have the benefit of a multi, multi-million dollar company pushing it on other products. So this might actually have a chance um, to get weight and move into a larger um, sphere of influence. So yes, it is available on GitHub, uh, github.com slash DellarWP um, under Fields API. Um, if, if that's not currently public, if I'm misspeaking, it'll be available soon otherwise. It's also available inside of the GiveWP GitHub repository um, in the, the source framework directory. You can lift it right out. We did build it with the intention of it living outside of Give and becoming a dependency. And so it does not have um, any of our, well, as little of our bias as we, we could manage in the direction of the Fields API. We actually have a implementation of it in our own code. So the framework piece is in our code. In a different spot, we have the implementation of it. So we're using it as an internal dependency for that, that very purpose. Next question. <clears throat> so if I describe it correctly, mm -hmm. is that you use Gutenberg on the back end generate this JSON blob mm -hmm. that you store. How does that JSON blob get consumed by the API that you build? Yeah, so we parse the JSON um, string into a block collection, uh, which is a class we have in PHP <clears throat> that reflects the same data structure as it does in the client in Gutenberg. And then we have a custom parser that converts that into fields. Um, so the blocks get mapped to things. There's some opinionated ones, like the amount field in our donation form is highly opinionated. But things like custom fields are just like text fields, and we map those into the fields API. Um, and so it's just a, it's a, it's an adapter pattern. Uh, we loop over the blocks, we check the type, and then convert that to a different structure for the fields API. For things like properties that are like required, um, or the label, or a description, or help text, in Gutenberg, that exists in the attributes array. Um, it's a flat structure, um, whereas we move it into very specific key value pairs inside the fields API. Uh, so that's the work we're doing, is matching up the namings 
and really mapping it from one to the next. Anybody else? Another question. Thank you for good, great questions today. Thank you for your patience and answer. Okay, well, uh, the next session starts at 10 o'clock. In the meantime, if you walk through the sponsor section, stopping by to say hi and thank you for sponsoring this, you can find <coughs> coffee and water. Thank and, you. Uh, you'll be available today, tomorrow? Yeah, I'll be here today and tomorrow walking around. Um, Happy to talk this stuff. Um, I'm also happy to talk about, you know, working on client sites. Um, if anyone's interested in foster care or adoption, I know a lot about that too. Happy to talk about it or any of the other hobbies listed prior. Okay. So yeah. Great. Thank you, Kyle. So I'll give him a hand.